In today's video, we'll explore the fascinating world of microcontrollers. These tiny brains power the machines all around us, from washing machines to mobile phones, from robotic arms to rockets. Microcontrollers are the driving force behind them. Before we dive in, check out our previous video, What is a Microcontroller? You'll find the link in the description or just click the i button for a quick introduction. Now let's jump straight into the architecture and peripherals of a microcontroller. Welcome to Coco Watt Media. A microcontroller is an amazing combination of both hardware and software. These two parts work together to perform specific tasks in real-time systems. Let's break it down a bit. The hardware includes the CPU or central processing unit, which is the brain of the microcontroller. Then there's memory, flash memory, RAM, and EEPROM, which stores programs and data. And don't forget the peripherals like GPIO, ADC, DAC, timers, and communication interfaces that help the microcontroller interact with the outside world. On the other hand, software is the set of instructions that tells the CPU exactly how to operate, interact with those peripherals, and complete tasks. Think of it as the mind guiding the hardware's actions. Now, let's put this into an example you can relate to an automatic washing machine. The hardware in the washing machine includes sensors, motors, and valves. Meanwhile, the software provides instructions for things like when to fill water, spin the drum, or drain the water. Here's how it works. When you select a wash cycle, the microcontroller reads your input through the GPIO or General Purpose Input Charge Output. The software retrieves the program stored in memory. Then, the CPU executes the instructions step by step, controlling the hardware, like turning the motor or opening the valve at the right time. This harmony between hardware and software is what defines an embedded system, a system that works seamlessly to perform a task. Now, let's take a closer look at the microcontroller's key components. We'll start with the CPU, the core of every microcontroller. The CPU is often called the microcontroller's brain. It's the part that handles all computations, processes instructions, and manages operations. Let's break down the key components of the CPU starting with the arithmetic logic unit. First, we have the arithmetic logic unit, ALU. The ALU is responsible for arithmetic operations like addition and subtraction. It also handles logical tasks such as AND, OR, NOT, and other similar operations. Here's an example. Imagine you have a temperature sensor that takes multiple readings throughout the day. The ALU processes those readings and calculates the average temperature for you. This allows the microcontroller to make sense of the data it collects. Next, let's talk about registers. Registers are important because they provide temporary, high-speed storage for data while the CPU works. Now, let's look at the different types of registers. The program counter. You can think of the program counter like a bookmark in a book. It keeps track of the next instruction the microcontroller needs to execute, telling the CPU exactly where to pick up and continue. The stack pointer. The stack pointer works like the top plate in a stack of dishes. It keeps track of where the next piece of data should go, ensuring that you always know where to add or remove from. General Purpose Registers. These are like a notepad. GPRs temporarily store data or calculations while the CPU works on tasks, just like you note down quick notes during a meeting. The Status Register. Think of this like the dashboard lights in your car. The status register shows important system information, 
like whether the system is on, off, or if something needs attention. Now, let's move on to the control unit. This part is like the conductor of an orchestra. It orchestrates everything in the CPU, making sure all the pieces work together smoothly. The control unit moves data between the CPU, memory, and peripherals, ensuring that everything happens in the right order. It also decodes instructions and ensures smooth operations. Think of the control unit like a traffic controller. Just like a traffic controller manages vehicles and lights at an intersection, the control unit manages the flow of information, ensuring everything moves in an organized and efficient manner. Now let's talk about a fascinating component of the CPU, the interrupt controller. But before we dive into that, we first need to understand what an interrupt is. Interrupts are signals that temporarily pause whatever the CPU is doing to handle something more urgent. Once the interrupt is dealt with, the CPU goes back to its normal tasks. Just like it was before, think of an interrupt like a fire alarm. When the alarm goes off, everything stops. Everyone's attention shifts to the fire. And once it's taken care of, everyone can go back to what they were doing. In the same way, when an interrupt happens, the CPU stops its current task to handle the more urgent event and then resumes normal operation after. There are two types of interrupts, internal and external. Internal interrupts are triggered by events inside the microcontroller, like a timer or the analog to digital converter or ADC. For example, a timer interrupt could create signals that make an LED blink on and off. External interrupts are triggered by events outside the microcontroller, such as pressing a button. For example, a door sensor might trigger an interrupt when the door opens. Now that we've covered the CPU, let's move on to another critical part of the microcontroller, the memory architecture. Memory is like the brain's storage system. It's divided into different areas, and each one serves a specific purpose. Let's take a closer look. First up, flash memory. This is where the program code or firmware is stored. It's non-volatile, which means it keeps the data even when the power is off. Imagine flash memory like a hardcover book. The information stays intact, even if you close the book and come back later. Next, we have RAM, which stands for Random Access Memory. Unlike flash memory, RAM is volatile. It only stores data while the microcontroller is running. RAM is used for things like variables and the runtime stack. Picture RAM like a notepad where you note down quick notes during a meeting. Once the meeting is over, the notepad is cleared. Then there's EEPROM, another type of memory that is also non-volatile. However, EEPROM is designed for frequent small writes. Think of it like a stack of sticky notes. You can easily add or remove information as needed. So we have flash memory for long-term storage, RAM for temporary data, and EEPROM for frequently updated data. Each type of memory serves its purpose, making the microcontroller more efficient. So now let's see how the CPU executes instructions or SW programs. It follows a simple three-step process. First, the CPU retrieves the next instruction from memory. It's like going to your to-do list and checking the next task. Next, the control unit decodes the instruction, figuring out exactly what needs to be done. It's like reading the task on the to-do list and figuring out how to do it. Finally, the CPU executes the instruction, meaning it processes the data or interacts with peripherals. This is where the action happens. Let's take an example with a smart thermostat. First, the CPU fetches the instruction to read the room temperature from a sensor. Then, it decodes the instruction, deciding whether to turn the heater on or off based on the temperature reading. Finally, the CPU executes the action by sending a signal to the heater 
through GPIO. That's the part of the microcontroller that allows it to send signals to devices. Let's move on to the clock system. Think of the clock as the heartbeat of the microcontroller. It keeps everything in sync, ensuring that every component works in perfect synchronization. There are two main types of clocks in microcontrollers, internal oscillators. These are built directly into the microcontroller. They provide a basic clock source. External crystals. These are added externally and offer much higher precision. External crystals are ideal for timing critical applications where accuracy is key. Clock speed and frequency. The speed of the clock, called its frequency, determines how quickly the microcontroller can execute instructions. Imagine adjusting the speed of a fan. You turn it faster for quick tasks and slower for energy efficiency. To achieve different speeds, microcontrollers use features like clock dividers and phase locked loops, PLL. Think of these features as gears in a car, adapting the clock speed based on the need, just like gears change speed in a car's transmission. The clock system ensures everything stays synchronized, helping the microcontroller run smoothly and efficiently. Now let's talk about peripherals. These are the components that connect the microcontroller to the real world. Peripherals are what make microcontrollers so versatile and capable of handling a wide range of tasks. Let's break down the main types of peripherals in a microcontroller. First up, we have GPIO, or General Purpose Input Output. This allows the microcontroller to send or receive signals, for example. It can read data from a door sensor, that's input, or control a motor, that's output. Next is the ADC, or analog to digital converter. It converts analog signals, like temperature readings from a sensor, into digital data that the microcontroller can process. Then we have the DAC, the digital to analog converter. This works in the opposite direction converting digital data back into analog form. For example, it takes digital signals and turns them into sound for devices like speakers. Next are timers and counters. They help with precise time management. For instance, they control the spin cycle of a washing machine or manage the intervals of a traffic light. These peripherals are what connect the microcontroller to the world around it, enabling all the amazing things microcontrollers can do. Let's dive into the another essential peripherals of microcontroller, which is communication interfaces. These are the lifelines of microcontrollers, enabling them to share data with other devices efficiently and reliably. First, we have UART, or Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. It's perfect for simple, point-to-point -point communication. For example, you can use UART to connect a microcontroller to your PC for debugging or data transfer. Next is CAN or Controller Area Network. This robust protocol is widely used in automotive and industrial applications. A great example is using CAN to control airbag systems in cars. Then there's SPI, the Serial Peripheral Interface. It's ideal for high speed, short distance communication, such as interfacing a microcontroller with an SD card. Now move on to I2C or inter-integrated circuit. This two-wire protocol is designed for connecting multiple peripherals. For instance, you can use I2C to read data from a temperature sensor. LIN or local interconnect network is a low-cost, single-wire protocol often used in simple automotive applications, like operating car windows or mirrors. Moving up, we have Flextray, a high-speed and fault-tolerant protocol used for critical systems, such as communication between electronic control units in advanced vehicles. Finally, there's Ethernet, offering high bandwidth for complex networks. It's ideal for applications like real-time video streaming in industrial systems. Each interface serves a unique purpose, balancing speed, cost, and complexity to suit specific applications. Now let's explore some advanced features found in modern microcontrollers. 
These features make them even more powerful and capable of handling complex tasks. First up, multi-core systems. Some microcontrollers come with multiple processing cores. This allows them to handle parallel operations. Think of it as having multiple brains working at once. For example, in advanced driver assistance systems or ADAS, we see this in action. One core manages braking, another handles engine control, and a third processes radar data. All of this happens simultaneously, ensuring everything runs smoothly and seamlessly. Next, let's talk about AI processors. Certain microcontrollers now include AI processors designed to accelerate tasks like facial recognition in smart cameras or decision-making in self-driving vehicles. Another key feature is safety peripherals. These include watchdog timers and hardware security modules, or HSMs. Watchdog timers ensure system reliability by resetting the system if something goes wrong. And HSMs protect sensitive data like transaction information in a payment terminal, keeping it secure. Now let's look at data integrity and protection. Other features like error correcting code, ECC, for memory, ensure data integrity, while memory protection units add extra layers of security. These features are especially important in industries like aerospace, automotive, and healthcare, where precision and security are critical. With these advanced capabilities, microcontrollers are truly driving innovation. They're essential not only for everyday gadgets, but also for cutting edge systems that power the future. Let's quickly recap what we covered today. Microcontrollers combine essential components like the CPU, memory, and peripherals. Together, they power a wide range of applications. We also explored some advanced features like multi-core systems, AI processors, and safety peripherals. These features are pushing the boundaries of what microcontrollers can achieve. Thank you for joining us today at CocoaWatt Media. If you enjoyed this session, don't forget to like the video, share it with others, and subscribe to our channel for more tech insights. Stay tuned for more engaging tech training. Until next time, this is CocoaWatt Media. We innovate, educate, and boost tomorrow.